it's important to talk about these things so you know what your ideal situation is, what you'll say yes to, what you won't. If you're in the journey before you travel, know that this could be a possibility and talk about it. Okay, we're going on this vacation, we're taking this vacation. If this situation presents itself, what are we going to do? Your dream is to become a mom. My dream is to help you get there. I'm Rebecca Greenspan, a single mom through domestic adoption and an adoption consultant for over a decade. I'll be your guide, along with other adoption professionals and members of the Adoption Constellation, walking you step by step down this beautiful and complex path of adopting your baby. When I was going through the adoption process, I had no idea what I was doing, what I needed to know, or more importantly, who to trust. Well, after helping hundreds and hundreds of families grow through the beauty and complexity of adoption, I've learned more than a thing or two, and let me tell you, it's not always rainbows and butterflies. This isn't just another podcast sharing adoption stories, but it's for you if you're genuinely committed to diving in with an open heart, eager to learn everything there is to know about adopting a baby so that you can show up for yourself and your child in the best way possible. This podcast is for you if you're ready to put your newfound knowledge into action. Adoption isn't for the weak of heart, and it certainly isn't done when your baby gets placed in your arms. If that's what you think, I'm afraid you're living in la-la land. My promise to you is to keep it real if you promise to keep digging. We'll acknowledge the hard, and we'll also celebrate the joy that is adoption. You ready? Let's do this. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Adoption with Rebecca Greenspan. That is me, founder and CEO of RG Adoption Consulting and host of the Adoption Roadmap Podcast. Good morning. Here we are, another week. So... What has gone on in adoption today, this week? Okay. I got a call. Good morning, love. I see my nephew on here. Um, today is the last day of school. Yay! Today is the last day of school for my son. It's a half day, not even. He leaves at 8, 11. I drop him off at 8. He leaves at 11. It's a kickball day. Um, so he got through it, I think. Seventh grade behind him, eighth grade going, and I just, uh, coming. And I just want to talk for a second about our kids, um, especially if they have neurodivergent brains who think differently and some schools can accommodate that better than others. He lasted for four years in the school he's in, and they couldn't accommodate him as much as need be as the grades got higher. And so we have to make the difficult, difficult decision to switch schools, which was a whole thing for me. And, oh. I'm telling you that we need, I hear my dog growling downstairs and I, I'm wondering what it, what it is. Um, I need a consultant to help walk through, you know, when, when life isn't smooth sailing, it's like, who do we turn to, right? To, to guide us, which is what I do for people who are walking through the adoption process and wanting to build their, their families through adoption. Um, I'm their guide, and I'm realizing more and more that we need a guide for everything in our lives, and I'm sure I could find it. But even to find the guide and know that it exists is not always easy. And back to my story about children with neurodivergent brains, we need to advocate with them. We need to recognize, first of all, that um, some of our kids may learn differently and may have needs that are different than typical children. And many children through adoption 
are these children that I'm talking about. And so recognizing that they have differences is the first thing. Getting that tested, figuring out what that is, figuring out the tools that can be used to help them. It's not easy, but it's necessary. And, um, you know, not even talking about how to best parent in these circumstances, because that's a whole nother episode that I am not equipped to lead. But being able to figure out, maybe with your child, when one thing isn't working and you have to make a change. And then figuring out what that change is. And I hope I get it right. I hope we get it right. But we might not. And another change may need to happen, and that's okay. We're kind of wrapping our heads around that. When I say we, it's just me and my son. But he's a teenager now, about to be. And also... I just sent an email because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts on ADHD and I sent an email to his current school thanking them for the past four years and what they've done and sending them a link to this um, resource, this doctor who does, who's one of her goals is to create very effective neurodivergent classrooms in schools across the country. Hey, Rebecca. Uh, nice to see you. Um, so I sent them that resource and I hope they appreciate it because I think that they can do better and yet what they are there to do, they do very well. So that's my little personal tangent and what I have been dealing with. There are a couple other things that came up amongst our client community, amongst, amongst the communities online around adoption. One of them is drug exposure. So I had a client who basically was chosen by an expectant mom who's had all sorts of substance exposure, was using really heavy drugs. And they were really torn because on the one hand, you know some of the effects of maybe one drug on its own, but then when you combine them, and you hear the, you know, how much is being used, it gets really scary. And it's like, what does this mean? What does it mean now? What does it mean long term? So we, thank goodness for my amazing network, we hopped on a call right there. I just three-wayed in Dr. Sarah Silvestri um, at the adoption doc, and she answered. And I said, are you available for a quick consult? I have them on the line. And thank goodness she agreed. Talk them through it. I learned a lot. They learned a lot. They sat with it overnight and decided to move forward. And now they have their baby in their arms and could not be more in love. And I bring this up because I think it's really important as part of your team, as part of your team, to have somebody that you can call to say, give me some professional insight here. Not opinions necessarily, because Dr. Silvestri was not going to tell them, yes, I would or no, I wouldn't. We talked through what some of the outcomes could be with this drug exposure and without this drug exposure. Looking at the fact that it could be the same outcome, usually we never know, right? And a lot of it has to do with the environment that our kids are growing up in and nurture versus nature. You know, where does that come in versus where's the hard line in the sand from what they were exposed to. So having that resource available to you is really, really important and useful when you need it. And she happened to be available at the time we needed her. Thank you, Dr. Sarah Silvestri. We'll be having you on soon onto the podcast. And um, yeah, it all, it all worked out. It all worked out. But one of the things she brought up, and I, I think this is really important, is that for a lot of our kids 
who have experienced substance exposure, and all of our kids, meaning all of our kids through adoption, have experienced trauma, our kids may be more likely to abuse substances later in life. And so we as parents need to be very cognizant of that and talk to our children and be open with them about the fact that they are more likely to use and what the um, outcomes could be, what problems they'll run into, what, um, you know, what negative effects that could have on their life, and that they need to be very diligent about the, about the knowledge that if they use once, they are more likely to be addicted than maybe their friend who can use once. So we need to be able to have these conversations with our children and not shy away from it, thinking if we talk about it, then they'll use. Not true. We need them to know, here's what your genetic um, ex exposure was. Here's where you come from, and here is the science and the research backing that and the statistics showing that you may be more likely to become an addict, and you need to know that. And putting some things in place to maybe support them through that. So I, I thought that I, I was so happy that she brought that up because I think that that is such an important piece well beyond what you know, learning differences or ADHD um, likelihood, all of that. So besides that, how we talk to our children and pr prepare them. So that was one. And congratulations to my guys who are new dads and with their baby. Before we go on, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go away. We still have so much to talk about. The decision to place a child for adoption is easily the most challenging decision a woman makes in her lifetime. For many birth moms, they feel like the center of focus during the process of planning adoption, but after choosing placement, so many report feeling unseen, making an already difficult experience even more painful. Adoption does not erase motherhood, and that's why solace gift boxes for birth mothers were created so that every birth mother will feel seen in her motherhood. These thoughtfully curated and artistically designed care packages for birth mothers contain artisan goods from small businesses and are available in three unique themes. The Peace, Love, and Pamper box is spa-themed and is ideal during the weeks after birth. It happens to be the one that I personally sent to my son's birth mother, and she loved it. The paper crane box is inspired by the Japanese legend of the paper crane and sends hope and healing, and is perfect for a creative person for a birthday or holiday. Finally, the light box is a reminder of needing darkness to see the light, and is a beautiful thinking of you gift. The boxes are available in three sizes, mini, standard, and deluxe, and are $59.99 or less. Shipping is included. Don't know a birth mom? Sponsor a box today, and the company will distribute a box to a birth mother identified through their public nomination form. Solace is a product of Absolute Love Adoption, a licensed 501c3. For more information, go to AdoptSolace.com. The Adoption Roadmap Podcast and RG Adoption Consulting are proud affiliates of Solace Gift Boxes for Birth Moms. Another thing that came up, wow, it's been a doozy. I, I literally had four or five situations sent to me in one day. I, I am so grateful. I am so grateful for the network I've built and for the agencies and attorneys who put their trust in me and the way I prepare and educate my families. Now, whether a family takes what we provide them and really utilizes that, 
is sometimes out of my hands. I hope they will. And it's super important because I get the feedback from the agencies um, when, when my families are very prepared and when they're not. And when they're not, I'm like, I give them all the resources. They chose not to take it. Um, that, that aside, is, is it fear or is it your gut? And how do you know? I had a situation presented. Another, another, it's yours. You've been chosen for the taking. Now, this family happened to be out of the country. And so that was another layer on it. It was, you know, and I can totally understand that. When I have a plan in my head, so in this case, if I were traveling out of the country, I had been planning on this trip for a long time. I was two days in, had another week to go. Even though I want to be a mom more than anything, how do I quickly switch that mindset and say, okay, I have to cut this trip short that I've been planning for so long and hop on a plane, not knowing if I'll ever get back or when, and go fulfill this dream of mine to become a mom. So that was definitely a factor that was at play. And I bring this up because this is life. Like, don't stop your life when you are in the middle of your adoption journey. I just told a client that the other day. She's like, I can't keep planning my life around this adoption journey. And I said, stop planning your life around your adoption journey and live your life. You don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow or in a year. You can't stop living your life. Does this resonate with anyone? So I called the family. They were presented this situation. Baby was born. They would need to hop on a plane tomorrow. There were things about the situation that were ideal. Like, it doesn't get much better than this. And there were some minor things that weren't ideal that you may or may not ever get. And I'm not going to go into those details. But there was resistance there as I was talking to them. And I said, there's a lot of fear going on here, right? Babies don't need anything right away other than your love and some diapers and food. Um, you know, you can travel. Is, is the trip or becoming a mom more important? And my client said something to me that I really respected. And they had had a fall through also once before. So not only would they be um, cutting their trip short and traveling across the world to, to hopefully adopt this baby, but nothing's guaranteed. And they had had a fall through before and her gut told them that it wasn't going to work out the first time and it didn't. So all of that was playing into this the second time around when they were being called for a situation. And she said to me, I don't know whether this is a gut feeling that this isn't right or if my fear is getting in my way. And I said, now that I can respect and understand. And I wish I would have had some sort of something to give her uh, an exercise to figure it out. So I took it to my team and I asked my team, how do, you, how do you walk your clients through this? It's a really good question because no situation is ever going to feel perfect. There's always going to be a level of fear in there because nothing's for sure until it is. So one of my consultants said that what she does with her clients is she says, if you walk away, will you feel better or will you feel really sad and have regret? If you walk away from the situation, will you feel relief and will you feel better about it? Like, 
okay, I made a decision. I'm okay with that decision. Or are you going to sit with it and say, oh my God, I shoulda, woulda, coulda. I could be a mom right now. I can't stop thinking about this mom. This was an almost perfect situation. So so that's a really good exercise to really go in, inside it and ask that. The other question to ask yourself is if an ideal situation, ideal to you, was presented to you at this moment, you're out of town, you've been on this journey for a while, you want to be a mom more than anything, and your ideal situation is presented to you, would you be able to say yes and hop on that plane tomorrow? If not, then that's fear. So these are questions you have to ask yourself, and I think those are two really good practices and exercises to do if you are ever in that situation. I loved that. They ideally passed. The other thing that is important there is this particular couple was not on the same page, which makes it really excruciatingly hard and can really break up relationships. And what I told them is that you guys are partners and you have to support each other and you have to be on the same page. It's important to talk about these things so you know what your ideal situation is, what you'll say yes to, what you won't. If you're in the journey before you travel, know that this could be a possibility and talk about it. Okay, we're going on this vacation, we're taking this vacation. If this situation presents itself, what are we going to do? These are conversations that you don't always think about having, but you need to have because you guys need to be a strong front together. You need to be supportive of each other and have a solid front the whole time. Not always easy. So they will have some work to do to recover from this, I think. But what, what great lessons. Yeah, I'm going to bring these next two things up. A lot came up this week. You know, when when you're presented situations and when I'm sending out a lot of situations and asking a lot of questions and families are asking a lot of questions, a lot of things come up and present itself, right, that you weren't maybe thinking about or, or you didn't know would be coming up for you. So before we go on, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go away. We still have so much to talk about. Hey there, Adoption Roadmap fam. Are you ready to take the next step on your journey to parenthood? If so, head over to our website and take our quiz. It's called, Are You Ready to Adopt? It's not just about testing your knowledge. It's about making sure you're emotionally and practically prepared for the beautiful, complex journey of adoption. Let's make your dream of parenthood a reality. Go to rgadoptionconsulting.com and take the Are You Ready to Adopt quiz today. That's rgadoptionconsulting.com. The quiz is free, and it will let you know where you are in the process and if you're ready to jump into your adoption journey. Coping with a no is something that's also really difficult. I see people get really connected to certain situations that they are presented and they really want and they feel like this one is different than the other ones. This situation is a special situation and we feel connected to it. Number one, if there's a certain reason you feel connected to it, like if you see a ton of similarities between you and the expectant mom and dad, write a letter. Tell her why there is this connection, and maybe she'll see it too. 
And then you get that no. And how do you cope with that no? Maybe it's the first one. Maybe it's the 15th one. How do you cope with the no? All I can say <clears throat> is that it will eventually make sense. That's the, that's the best I can do. No's are hard. Try not to take them personally, and you will. And it's not about you. It's about her, and you still will. And do whatever you can to hold on to hope. <clears throat> Maybe do things a little bit differently. And know, deep down somewhere, just know that eventually the no you are receiving, receiving today is going to make sense to you later on. It will. It always does always does. I've been doing this for 11 years. Last thing that I want to bring up is telling your child their story. Telling your child their adoption story is something that really needs to happen on day one. Telling your child their story needs to happen from day one. You want your child to know as soon as they understand what their name is and can repeat it to you, you also want them to be able to say the word adoption and know that no, no, in their own way, that this is the way they came into your family. Start using words, birth mom, mom, first mom, tummy mom. The first one you use isn't going to feel right to you. Or you're going to have some sort of reaction to it, and you need to pay attention to that and say, whoa, why do, am I having such a strong reaction to calling another woman mom, to using that word? Maybe that's something you need to work through. Things are going to come up for you. It's going to all sound weird the first time you are talking about it. Or maybe it won't. But it, it, it's a little, I don't know, it just feels a little clunky. And you need it not to be so clunky and weird and uncomfortable and triggering for you by the time they understand it. So start on day one, please. Start on day one. And as your child is starting to understand it more, which usually happens around age three, by the way, developmentally, bringing in therapy for all of you, maybe for you as a mom or as a dad or as moms or dads or a couple, a heterosexual couple, whoever you are. Maybe you start with you guys as the parents. And then as your child gets older, bring them in. And I know that there is something called TheraPlay. I think it's all over the country. I know where I used to live in Evanston, they had a TheraPlay Institute. And I think that's where it started. Um, that is designed, uh, for children and they are also experts in adoption. I am pretty positive. So look into that. And that is always a good idea. And I always get happy and excited, um, when a family of ours, either current or past, asks me for the name of a therapist. We always give out therapist names and we have calls with therapists all the time so it's nothing new and when our families are really truly ready and I can provide that resource for them and know they're doing the work that gets me excited that was a lot we talked about drug exposure having an adoption doctor on your team that resource for you to help you make those hard decisions 
figuring out if fear is in play or if it's a gut feeling and some tools to help you figure that out. Coping with a no, telling your child their story, making difficult decisions about pulling your child out of one school, putting them into another school because their brains might not work like a neurotypical child, providing your school resources to do better. That was a big juicy episode today in This Week in Adoption. So I hope you will join me next week. I also want to remind you to tune into the Adoption Roadmap podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to watch it, go to YouTube. The Adoption Roadmap podcast comes out every Wednesday and Friday mornings. Tune in. If you like what you hear, please give it a five-star rating. Give us some feedback. Tell me what you want to hear more of. If you have a guest I should definitely interview, please let me know if you want to be on the Adoption Roadmap podcast. I would love to hear more. Let's do it. Let's do it. So you can comment, reach out to me however you want to reach out to me. All right. Until next week. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Adoption Roadmap podcast. If you did, I have a few favors to ask of you. First, please hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I'd love to hear your takeaways. Please write a review and let me know what you liked. And if you have a question or a suggestion on what you'd like to hear, I'd love to hear that too. Please shoot me an email at support at rgadoptionconsulting.com and let me know what you'd like to hear about. And if you have a question, I may just answer it online. Thanks again for listening. Tune in every Wednesday and Friday morning for a brand new episode of the Adoption Roadmap Podcast. Until next time, bye-bye.